Hey, good morning. So I'm going to try to cover the differences in the circuit types. Um, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Hopefully uh, I can stay on track. I like to get into a little bit of a training mode when I do these little videos like this, but um, I, that's really what this is for, right? To help, help you understand what the terminal types are for. So I have I have a connector symbol here, and when I select this connector symbol, I have no manufacturer part associated here right now. It's just the symbol, and inside that symbol, you can see here this red square. I have a terminal. They're described as terminals, uh, and inside there, there's no numbers here yet until I associate a manufacturer part to it, but this is where my circuits would be listed, and each circuit may have multiple terminals. In this case here, this symbol here, I have one circuit with four terminals. So let me open up the symbol so we can actually see that. We can see here I've got a number of different attributes associated to it. I even have my mnemonic in there. But we have our tags and I have one circuit with four terminals. Now that circuit, I can come over and I can change that to a lot of different types of circuits. Now, why would I want to change that? Me, I, I'm always helping customers out. Um, I stick to terminal 99.9% .9 of the time, right? Because I'm not getting into full on design work. I'm really just trying to help show um, show folks how, how the functionality works. Uh, so if you don't need to, I would recommend trying to keep all of your stuff at just pick one, right? I use terminal. Just pick one and and stick with it. It'll make your life easier. If you if you don't need to go down the rabbit hole of understanding these 100%, then um, you know if if your designs don't require extreme 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 detail, then don't worry about it. I would stick to just using something like like I have here as terminal. However, maybe you do want to do that. Well, what these really do. I almost want to call them like kind of a design rule check, right? You, it's going to help you make sure that when you select a connector that has terminal listed to it, that you're not going to select a motor manufacturer part and it's going to automatically connect it up. It'll still give you, because again, it'll, it'll still give you a two from wireless later on, but then, Hey, why is this wired this way? When I go to do this out, out in the shop floor or out, out in the field somewhere, it's, this doesn't make sense, right? So, um, I know I got off on a little tangent there, but let me let me explain what I just what I mean by what I just said. So I have my my symbol here, right, and it's listed as terminal. So let me go back to my schematic, and I'm going to add a manufacturer part. Now it knows that this is a connector symbol, so it's automatically going to filter to connectors, right? So most of my connectors have terminal. Let me find one that's not, here we go, oh, uh, here we go, that's, so here's one that's, a, here's a small example, right? They are still terminals, but in this case here with this symbol, with this manufacturer part, I should say, is that I have 24 circuits with one terminal in each one, whereas my symbol is defined with one circuit and four terminals. So to each his own. It's it's open because some people like to put all their terminals under one circuit, and some people like to have a different circuit for every single terminal. A PLC is a great example where maybe I have all my digital ins listed under one group and all my digital outs listed in another group. So you have that ability, that flexibility to, to break those out as necessary. So again, these are connectors. They're listed as terminals, but what happens when I change this to let's just go to a motor and I select this guy right here right it's the manufacturer part itself it's circuits it's a circuit type of a motor and it has three terminals just like our manufacturer part which has four terminals um, but we you know, it's not going to automatically connect. You can see that it's showing in here as, as unknown because it's not mapping terminal to terminal. It doesn't mean that I can't 
still go ahead and select that, it just will not automatically connect them. So again, it's, it's just built into the software that it recognizes that these are two different types of circuits. Uh, the manufacturer part and the symbol information are different. So it's not going to automatically make that connection. Now I can override that. I can just simply take this and drag that over the top and say, yeah, I want it to be that. And now when I, when I select this, pin four of the symbol is pretty much ignored because there was no circuit information. There was no terminal information for pin four in that manufacturer part. But we do get our line one neutral and ground from that motor information there. Take a look again. So again, inside the manufacturer part, uh, we have the, uh, the one circuit with the three terminals. Now, a few things to add about circuits and terminals, right? This is just a motor. That was just a connector symbol. But what about something more, um, something a little bit more detailed like a PLC? So we have the ability to, let's go in. One thing to note as we're going through this, if you're ever creating a brand new manufacturer part, I I always tell this to, to my customers is you may not need all the information now, but you never know if you're going to need it in the future. So when you're building out a manufacturer part, put as much information in as possible. The only two pieces of information you absolutely need are your reference and your manufacturer part. You don't even need to put anything else into this symbol other than those two pieces of information. But if you've got the spec sheet in front of you and you're trying to enter this, you might as well put it in because even a year from now, oh man, what was the... the what was the height width depth of this part, right? And you can put those in, or maybe there was an inrush current or something like that that you need to pay attention to. You can put that information in now and not have to worry about it later on. But let's say we go in and we're going to create a PLC. So first I want to make sure I'm on the right classification. And we can go in and we'll add, we'll add a couple, we'll add five groups here. Um, five circuits per se. Maybe the first one is going to be power supply, right? Maybe it's a AC circuit and we have line neutral ground. Uh, let's go in. We'll pick our analog input. We'll do an analog output. We'll do a digital. Where's my digital? There it is. And my digital. All right. So now in this case here for this PLC, I really want to define this a little bit better because I don't want to, I don't want to connect an analog input signal to a digital input signal, right? Uh, something's going to go wrong. I'm going to get some, something's going to break either the PLC or something downstream is going to get screwed up if I, if I do this wrong. So something like a PLC is very important right now uh, to make sure that you're, you know, you're, you're adding the right information um, to your schematic. So that way it will help you the, the contractors or your, your team that's out in the, out in the field or, or out on the shop floor, put this thing together, whatever it may be. From here now, each one of these groups, I can add individual circuits. So we say this was an AC circuit for whatever reason, right? I can say it's, uh, you know, A, B, C, or, you know, line neutral ground. Um, so I have that ability there. We can see the terminal marks starting to be grouped up together. Um, we can add more information about this. Maybe we want to put just a, a you know a small acronym for for what that's for. Because it's a PLC, we get a couple additional um, attribute fields. Again, garbage in, garbage out. The more information you put in about these parts, you can pull this information out later to display on your schematic or even in a report. So it it just goes to help. You know, it may take you an extra minute here to get all and define this all the right way, but on the back end, you're not going back to your schematic to search for that information or back to the spec sheet later on to find it, um, you know, specific information about that PLC. So you can go in and you can add additional information about all this. And then on the bottom, we have our, again, we're still in the power supply circuit here, but we have ability to add a few additional things, right? So the power supply analog PLC in, the PLC out, so on and so forth, or the analog, uh, the analog in and the analog out here, and the digital and digital out. Those are the types. Those are like a, a built-in design rule check to make sure that our symbol is going to look appropriate or connect appropriately. Some more design rule checks that we have are how many wires 
are we going to connect to this? Maybe we only want one per each, you know, each terminal here. I can also grab all of these and, and change them all at the same time. Uh, maybe I am going to be using for my max gauge, right? Maybe it's 16 is the max, right? And 20 is the min for this. So it, these are additional design rule checks uh, that you can run. You know, maybe in your schematic you were you were getting something done real quick, and you you're using a 14 gauge wire for whatever reason, and you hooked it up to your PLC, and now you can run this report. And hey, whoa, red flag! The PLC says that the maximum gauge is only 16, but in my schematic I have a 14 gauge wire running to it. Let me go back and check that. Right. So now these are these are some things. You know, same thing applies to the max wire number. Maybe I inadvertently added two wires. Um, to the same terminal, you know, but the PLC says you shouldn't do that because of whatever reason, right? It's not designed to do that. So you can set these to one. You can set these to whatever you want. If you want to be able to put 10 wires in there, have at it, right? But, um, you know, we all know that's probably not the case in most cases. Um, so things such as your PLCs, your motors, your fuses, right? Those are, those are, you know, you can you can go down that path of adding them, and making sure that my symbol, my fuse symbol, is going to match my fuse manufacturer part. When I see green is good, right? That little green box we saw. I'll go back to that so we can talk about that again. That green box, green is good. So if we see that automatically connecting, we know that those terminal types are are correct. So I hope this helps i probably you're probably thinking of another thousand questions you want to ask about this kind of stuff which is cool i will be glad to try to answer any more questions uh, just let me know and i hope you have a great day thanks again